Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18.1 beta 5. iOS 18.1 beta 5 is available to developers and iOS 18.1 public beta 2 should be out soon, by the time you're watching this video or sometime the following day usually. Now this update came in at 1.06 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max and was about a gigabyte or so on all the devices you see here. Along with this, Apple also released many other updates, iPadOS 18.1 beta 5, watchOS 11.1 beta 2, along with all the latest updates for the latest devices. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 22B5054E. And in this particular update, we actually do have new features and changes. The first thing we have is a new modem update coming from beta four to beta five or public beta one to beta two. And that should hopefully help with overall connectivity. As far as new features we can see, well, the first one has to do with the control center. If we go to add a new control, press and hold, add control, and then go down to connectivity, we have two new options here, one for Wi-Fi and one for VPN. So instead of having these toggles within this sort of connectivity icon, and then you have to expand it, you can now just add it if you'd like to add another one and add VPN if you'd like to as well. So if we go in here, now we have dedicated buttons for that and it will turn it off. You'll see here, if we go into the upper right, we have no Wi-Fi that's enabled. However, if we go back into settings, Wi-Fi is still here, just not connected. So it's not turning it off hundred percent, but at least we have the button and we don't have to go in and expand it here like that. It does seem to be a little bit faster when you expand this as well, but they haven't changed the controls here, but at least they've sort of brought them out on their own. If you don't want to use that box. Another thing they've changed has to do with the control center as well. If we go into settings and then go to control center, you'll see we have a new button to reset control center. Tap on this, we can reset it. And then if we go back in, you'll see that it's reset and we have all the pages from when we first installed iOS 18. I don't particularly like that. So I just delete all the controls here, get rid of them and go back to a one page setup. That's my preference, but you can set it up however you'd like. Another update has to do with camera control. Go into camera control on the latest iPhone 16 models, double press, go into cameras. And then as you swipe up, not only do you have an ultra wide option, but if you swipe again, it will flip the camera swipe back. It goes to the back camera. So you can quickly flip between both. This isn't in the public version of iOS 18, it seems. So that's something that they've added. They've also added an update in shortcuts. So if we go into shortcuts and you go to add control center, you now have that option where you can actually toggle the control center, show it, hide it, or toggle it. So you'll see those options here now. Also something else we're waiting for has to do with the hearing aid functionality and iOS 18. Apple said it would be coming soon with the iPhone and the AirPods pro two. And apparently it's in this beta, but it's not enabled. However, Aaron P 613 on X said he tested it and it works amazingly. So this is something they've added, but it's not enabled yet. Somehow he was able to enable it back within settings. We have an update for Apple intelligence and Siri. As far as the icon goes, there's actually a new version here where we have a dark mode icon. So we have beta four on the left, beta five on the right, and it's just a slight change there. They've also updated the icon and accessibility as well. If we go down to face ID and attention, there's a new blue icon for that. And then the color for eye tracking is changed from more of a purple to more of sort of a pinkish purple color. So slight changes, but something that's new, something else that they've updated and Apple's talked about before that they were bringing to iOS 18. And it looks like it's here with iOS 18.1 beta five is if you replace your display with a third party display, or maybe your battery with a third party battery, that's not from Apple things like battery health and true tone wouldn't work. It looks like it's working now. Thanks to Jay's tech who sent this in where with beta four, it wasn't working. Now we actually has battery health here and you'll see, it says unable to verify this iPhone has a genuine Apple battery. So it's unknown. And also true tone is showing up for him. And again, here you can see in his control center where we have true tone, where you have the option, even though he has a third party display. So that's something they've actually updated something else that they've updated. Finally, in this version, if we go to display and brightness settings, we now have the iOS 18 wallpaper in beta four, it was actually the iOS 17 wallpaper, and it still is for the public release. So if we go to display and brightness, you'll see the old wallpaper on the left versus the new one on the right. I'm not sure why it took so long to update that, but they finally updated that.
Also with regards to call recording, some people were questioning about that with older devices. Here's an iPhone 11 with iOS 18.1 beta 5. If we go into a phone call, now I'm in a phone call with this device over here. If we go to the option to record the phone call, it will let them know it's being recorded. That's probably due to legal reasons around the world and in different states, but now it's actually recording my voice in real time and then transcribing it. Many people knew that it could record, but this actually transcribes. It looks like it was here in beta four as well, but it's definitely working now. So if we go ahead and maybe end the call, call is ended, we can view the saved call. And if we go into the saved call, you can see the transcription here. So we'll go ahead and press play. It may take a moment, but it will transcribe in real time. Now I found this to be a little bit buggy. So if we pause here and then I do the call again, but I have this turned on and place another call, sometimes it works. So let's go ahead and tap done. We'll go back in, go to transcribe. And it says transcription will begin once you start recording. So it's a little bit buggy right now. Let me try it one more time. So again, in this phone call, we'll go to record and we'll try it one more time. And it should actually record in real time. So now it should sort of pick up what I'm saying and transcribe this in real time in notes. And this is something that hopefully will show up. It's recording and let's see if it actually works. So we'll end the call again. You'll see the saved call. If we go back in, go to transcription. Now it worked this time. So it definitely works. It's just a little bit buggy right now. As far as anything else new, the first time you go into photos, you'll see a new message about Apple intelligence where you'll have message summaries and smart replies. Now I didn't actually receive this myself, but many other people did and actually sent it to me saying that they received it. So let me know if you're seeing that the first time you go into messages. There's also no sleep apnea yet in the health app with iOS 18.1 betas. So if you have one of the latest Apple watches, the series 10, you won't actually benefit from that. I'm not seeing that even on the older devices, you can use it, but if we go into health, so within the health app, if we search for apnea, you won't see it at all. You can try sleep. And again, you won't see it at all. So I'm not sure if it's just not working in general, but for sleep, it's not listed. I went into the sleep options and I don't see anything here yet. So hopefully they'll add this maybe with the next version, but at this point it doesn't look like it's here for the latest Apple watches, unfortunately. As far as bug fixes, well, it seems they've fixed airdrop. It works much better in this version. If we go into photos, then maybe we'll airdrop to the iPhone 15 pro max. It airdrops right away. If I want to airdrop to something else, Again, maybe the iPhone 11 here on the same version. Let's just go ahead and airdrop. It asks me to accept and it works right away. It seems much, much faster and more reliable this time around. Sometimes I had to try it two or three times to get it to work properly. It works the first time every time for me now. The other thing they fixed is when you connect AirPods 4, it looks like the graphic now works properly. So I had that issue when I did the unboxing, the, the graphic with the battery comes up where it didn't before. So that seems like it's resolved. And they've also fixed an issue in spotlight when you're searching for something. Icons wouldn't match properly. You'll see the security settings, but we also have the wallet app here. So they've now fixed that in this update. As far as the wallpaper dimming bug, while supposedly this wasn't a bug, it looks like it's fixed in this beta. I tried multiple wallpapers. I couldn't get it to dim the wallpaper. So it looks like they finally fixed that after about a year and a half or so. Now I've already mentioned most of the bug fixes in this update, but if we take a look at the public facing release notes and we go down to files, they've actually fixed an issue where creating local files in the files app fails in the vision OS two and iOS 18 simulators. If the host is not upgraded to Mac OS Sequoia beta, there's a couple other things worth noting in here that I've already mentioned, but mostly this is the same as beta four. But if you're having issues, make sure you report them in the feedback app and take a look here to make sure it's not already a known issue. As far as other bugs, well, some people are having issues with the hearing icon showing up and not being able to delete it on a separate page. I haven't seen that myself, but many people are reporting that and other bugs actually have to do with the iPhone 16 specifically. Apparently people are reporting touch issues on iOS 18, the public version. So hopefully Apple will fix that soon. Also Apple pulled iPad OS 18 for M4 iPad pro. Apparently it was breaking devices. I thankfully never had that issue, but they haven't released an update for it yet. So I would expect iOS 18.0.1 very, very soon. It could be after this video, it could be tomorrow, but I would expect it very soon as Apple needs to resolve that issue, maybe a touch issue with iPhone 16, and maybe some of the first bugs that we were experiencing with it. According to Mark Gurman, there's apparently going to be many fixes to sort of get this as stable as possible this week. So hopefully we'll see that as soon as tomorrow. 
iOS 18.1 beta 6 or release candidate will probably be sometime next week, maybe on the 30th or the 1st of October. And iOS 18.1 could release sooner than we expect in early October. At least it's expected in October itself, and then we'll see more Apple intelligence features in iOS 18.2 betas, and then once that releases to the public. So we're waiting for many of the updates, no Genmoji or Image Playground yet, just the basic things with sort of the writing tools, cleanup in photos, and suggestions and things like that. So far, we haven't seen all of the updates just yet. When it comes to overall performance, it feels very fast. Benchmark scores actually show that as well, and I'll show you that in a moment. And of course, it had a little bit of a hiccup there. But in general, it's very smooth and fast, at least the time I've been using it, and seems to be very stable. Of course, that will take time to notice, and we'll have to check that out on the weekend. As far as overall heat, well, of course, it was quite warm after installing, but it cools down nice and quickly, and the iPhone 16 series, especially the Pros, seem to handle heat much better. When it comes to battery life, well, again, that will take a few days to know, but if we go into battery, battery health, I'm at three cycles now with 100%, and over the last four days, you can see here, I had two hours and 50 minutes of screen active time yesterday with nine hours and 33 minutes of screen idle time, using about 55% of my battery. It's not great on this beta. Hopefully this one is much better as today I already have three hours of screen active time and I've used, well, I'm down to 76%. So hopefully it gets much, much better. When it comes to if you should install iOS 18.1 beta 5, well, if you're on beta 4, definitely install beta 5. If you're on public beta 1, I would probably wait for public beta 2. And if you're on iOS 18, I'd probably wait until the public release if you're just wanting to make sure it's the most stable version of the release. But overall, I think it's pretty good. When it comes to benchmarks, we'll take a look here in Geekbench 6. And I scored 3,387 for single core, 8,435 for multi-core. Compared to what I had before on beta 4, it's a significant leap by almost, well, about 800 on multi-core score and a little bit, about 86 on the single core score. So definitely better than what I had when I took this out of the box. It seems to be getting much better. So that's good. That's a good sign for this beta and hopefully it improves by the weekend. So that's pretty much everything so far in iOS 18.1 beta 5. If you found additional features, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <music>